Good morning there, YouTubers. It's been uh, approximately one week. It's been a week and a day since my last YouTube. My last YouTube, I was saying I refer to current events, but I'm not going to like synchronize with current events. I'm not going to like wait till the next big thing, right? And sure enough, big things between last week and this week, right? This is the January 6th week with the uh, um, major events in the U.S. political scene, so I'll talk about that. I should, right? Because I do want to keep up with the flow here. But I'm starting us out here in the Philippines, but notice we're at a place called Citizendium. Now, is that how they pronounce it? I like that it has Zen in it. Citizendium. Citizendium. A citizen's compendium. It's got a lot of good Latin feel to it like that. And it's using the same Wikimedia engine as Wikipedia and as Wiki Educator. You may know that I have pages on a Wiki Educator, another domain other than this one. But it's a familiar format, right? We're looking at the Philippines entry for this particular uh, Wiki. And I have an identity page established. There's a short bio, which I wrote for my applying to this uh, community and I'm thinking I will start adding some links here actually um, maybe start a few stub pages if I can figure out where and when I mean I, I don't want to barge in and just be too cavalier about adding stuff right stub pages are a lot easier to add to than uh, starting a page from fresh Okay, because where does it go exactly? Is there a grand schema I don't know about? So it was in that, asking questions like that, they got me writing this, a pithy history of Python. It actually, the URL is based on the older title, Some Python History. And this is on Medium, but I've been running it by people off camera, you could say, and getting feedback. Thank you, Dr. Sonnenfeld. Thank you, everyone, uh, for some pointers and tips. And it's, it is pithy. I get all through the history of the Python language in a totally abbreviated way, because I don't talk about the cast of characters. All the developers and maintainers, and you could write whole books, do plays, right? Python became a culture. I think what... Most science fiction writers miss. Somebody corrected me at one point and showed me a book where someone had gotten it, but that computer languages would be the basis for tribalism or future subcultures. I almost said cults, but if you know my language, subculture and cults, neither one carries that much judgment, right? There are cults and there are cults. There are subcultures. And there are subculture wars you could talk about. And there are just so many, right? So much to talk about. Now, my subculture includes, I'm a big fan of, and this channel is largely devoted to, Bucky Fuller stuff, right? Which includes synergetics, a uh, kind of a philosophy. I mean, every philosophy is a kind of philosophy. And uh, I have a philosophy background. I went to Princeton, woohoo, rah, rah. And this is a brand new discovery by me of this like group, a book a book study group in where Wisconsin or something. Um, and then I started chatting with the people who are involved in it, and I've met some new two new new uh, synergetic scholars that I didn't know exist. So I'm gonna ritually subscribe here on camera to um, Daniel's channel right here. I watched his video yesterday. And hey, wonderful to find that we're not as small as I thought, right? Every time I find more people involved in this stuff, I'm like pleasantly surprised, you could say. Although, you know, I have to say some of the, some of the twists, some of the subcultures, it's just like, you know, there's always going to be branches and forks. 
and sometimes it's surprising, you know. It's kind of like when Quakers, you come to a Quaker's subculture and then they do mass or something. It's like, what? That's, whoa, you know. So all the mixes you, the hybrids, right? So speaking of Twisted, I'm just thinking out loud regarding paranoias and, you know, how different was it, I ask on Facebook, this storming of the Capitol building and storming using weaponry of a much higher caliber, all of Iraq and all of those palaces and smashing stuff everywhere with cruise missiles even. But wasn't that built on inflaming a paranoia about, you know, Saddam Hussein planning to nuke the U.S., Condoleezza Rice, Dick Cheney. To me, they were like Trump inciting to riot, right? Because I don't see a real plan. Well, in the back of their minds, there are people who think that there's a grand plan here, which led to then attacking Libya. And my family had ties to Libya. Talked about that. I show, I don't have any of the master plans for Libya here on my desk at this time. But I have whole boxes of that stuff. Because my dad, right, he was a freelance consultant living in Italy at the time. So it's part of my bio. That was before the Philippines, right? That was high school when I went to the Philippines. I was in Italy through third, third through eighth grade, you could say. So marching onward, looking forward to seeing more of Daniel's videos and <clears throat> I'll be joining that group eventually to uh, have real-time discussions as opposed to asynchronous right I spend a lot of time in this video rebooting K through 16 towards the end talking about the different modalities of interaction based on two axes whether they're in real time or take place sort of asynchronously time sliced and also going across is it one to one one to many or many to many like zoom might be a many to many experience right or you're one on one like I was in tutoring yesterday picking up kind of where I left off by the way this is a segue in tutoring we were playing around with a Python implementation of the fraction type or let's call it the rational number type that's much more um, formal to call it that, or even the set Q. People use the letter Q for the rational number type, and that's probably a more useful meaning of Q than Q. But name collisions happen. So we were going through, here we go, this section. I'm scrolling down there, but this section, defining type Q, the rational number type, I was using this interactively with my um, stu student and I was getting crazy answers when I started dividing fractions and I found that this code here is uh, not correct and I don't want to have wrong code out there with my name on it all over the place if I can af avoid it right like I don't want to be intentionally undermining my own stuff so, segue time, using Spider, the interactive developer of choice, when I tutor usually. Like, I might use VS Code when I'm on by, by myself, but when I'm sharing on screen, here's the same pretty much code, but true division, did I change that at all? I don't think I did, but power, how we do power, definitely change that. And let me look at a couple other things while we're at it. So I'm going to copy this over to um, my Jupyter Notebook. So we're looking through a uh, code cell in something called a Jupyter Notebook. And this channel is a lot about Jupyter Notebooks. This channel is a lot about high school level topics. Like I'm not trying to wow you with the grand unified field necessarily. I'm kind of more like, you know, we're an we're a advanced high school. Like, you could say we're a, um, beyond college prep because we're already doing college level stuff. But it's like high school. 
because I think that's a good time of life. You're wide open, you haven't specialized a lot, and the knowledge has to be pitched at a certain level to where it interconnects with what you already know and so forth. I find it a good place to hang out. Anyway, let's hope this fixes the powering problem. Let's see if I ca caught the other thing too. I want to keep my numerator and my denominator uh, whole numbers, integers, right? I do not want any floating points to occur in my numerator or denominator. That defeats the purpose. You'll also see I'm using type annotations. Okay, I'm going to save this. This is more just to oh, I hit reload, restart. No, 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 no. Save this and let's move on. That was kind of me in tutor mode, me fixing my own source code, eating my own dog food. We're back to medium here. Just wanted you to know, you know, I write a lot about geek lore and segue there. Let's skip on ahead. I found this movie. In fact, the director of uh, Philippe Borel, French, I believe, contacted me directly through LinkedIn and we had a little exchange. He had not seen Revolution or OS yet, probably because it's he's French and that's an American film. But I've given him a link to a copy with French subtitles. Not that he I don't even know him. Maybe he doesn't need French subtitles. I don't know. But this movie is looking really interesting. And it's about open source. It's about free open source uh, movements, right? They couldn't get a computer. I should turn off the sound if I'm going to show it. But I'm not going to show it. I'm just going to say, take a look. And um, what's it called? It's about keeping, keeping things open in medicine, agriculture, and just software in general. And Richard Stallman makes an appearance. Um, I'm scrolling through this because maybe I'll find Richard Stallman. Let's see. Um, anyway, this is just a preview, so you'll be happy to know there's a full film here. Which, uh, there he is. Which I would recommend and then watch Revolution OS too, maybe. Alright. And then I'm studying to wrap this up. Uh, Mist, the history of all those games from Cyan and Spokane, right? Mist, Uru, Riven, and when I watched this uh, brief history, which about 45 minutes, I realized how much time I had really spent in those games. I'm not claiming I was all that good at it, but just wandering around in those worlds, right? I was immersed, as they say. Like, I really appreciated those worlds. Very, very cool and interesting places to hang out. So when I watched this movie, I was like, oh, I know that place. I've been there. I, I spent hours right there, you know. So nostalgia for cyber worlds. It's kind of a new phenomenon, but not really. Because when you're a kid, you grow up, like, say, reading the Narnia books or whatever. You have or you've watched a lot of movies. In other words, we stuff our heads with fiction all the time. Always have. In fact, you could say we're almost mostly stuffed with fiction. About elections, about everything, right? About politics is a big bag of disinformation, a lot of it. And you'll invade entire countries over that, right? Very out of control. But also, you know, there's some feedback is, is happening. So here in Facebook, there's me talking to the director or saying I am... Um, that was just not planned, right? And I'm going through some old pictures and scanning them in and so forth. This guy I thought was very clever and funny. Partly just it came out so right away. Of course there's no whole kit like this. It's a spoof. Part of the fun of the internet. But then there are people who don't know what's a spoof and what's sarcastic and what's meant to be satire and all this stuff. So you do need a literate population to play with toys like this. By toys, I mean the internet, right? And it's like, it's, yeah, it's more dangerous than guns, you could say. I'd say guns have no power compared to the internet, right? They're zero. Anyway, that's okay. The power of the pen is greater than the power of the gun. We knew that. All right, folks. 
thanks for joining me, and I look forward to continuing our discussions. Hang in there.